So Marcus spoke last week on, is the Bible still relevant today? I'm speaking today on, why is there suffering and evil? And the reason why we wanted to take a little bit of these topics is because we believe that God is bringing a time of breakthrough. And yet these are some of the topics that maybe we need to break through. That actually in our lives, if we're not reading the Bible, if we don't think that it's relevant, that will limit our growth in God. If there's some topics like this is a big topic, okay? And if there's things that this, maybe this is a, a, what I call a shocker or a blocker to our Christian faith, that actually something there is, is wedging us and it's stopping us from going further with God. Also, with this period of breakthrough, we believe that God's really trying to call us to be equipped to evangelise and speak to people that don't know God. And it might be that you're sat here this morning and you don't know God. And I know that this is a topic that they cover in Alpha. And it's really helpful as a Christian when we have a conversation with those that don't know God. If they're asking questions like this, we have something to draw from. And we think it's really important that actually we all know that in our day-to-day evangelism, actually if something along this line is asked of us, we've got something to draw from. And I just think it's useful in trying to equip the church. What I want to say this morning, though, this is like a little disclaimer, really, before I get up and talk. You know, it's one of those little things like, don't, don't shoot me. Um, Is what, I've got 20 minutes this morning. And we can appreciate, this is a huge topic. This topic, you know, from the earliest writings on this topic have been found 300 years before Christ. So, you know, it's been debated about and spoken about for generations upon generations. Um, My husband, kindly, he's an RE teacher, sent me some of his lessons on this topic. He sent me four lessons. His lessons are 100 minutes long, so I've got great. That's 400 minutes worth of content. Let's try and reduce that down into 20. So what this is not this morning is it's not all the answers to this question. Yeah, there's no way I can do that in 20 minutes. There's not specifics this morning. And it's also not kind of emotionally driven or talking about key areas of suffering because actually what this is this morning is it's just an overview of a potential response you could give to this question if someone was to ask you. And it's also to start you thinking, if you know you're wrestling with this yourself, it's to start maybe the encouragement of you going and seeking it and grappling with it. Last week, Marcus really encouraged you to wrestle with some of the content in the Bible. And I know that I've grown spiritually when I've had to like grapple with God over things. And um, I think for breakthrough, we want to encourage that a bit. Um, So here is, this is why is there suffering and evil? Massive topic. Okay, here's some of the response to that. I've broken it down into kind of what I think are three key plausible elements in a response. And the first one, and the first one we've got to always understand is that unfortunately, we live in a broken world. Our world, sadly, is broken. And this happened in Genesis. In Genesis 1, God created a perfect world for us. In Timothy, it says, uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 4, it says, everything created by God is good. So God created this good, this wholesome, this perfect world. And we know that he invited and he created Adam and Eve to be part of that world. He clearly also said to Adam in Genesis 2, he said, the Lord took man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. The Lord God commanded man, you are free. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. And this is really key for us. It's key that God created man to be free. That was his intention constantly. He wants us to be free and he created man to be free. He also created man really clearly with the understanding that there is a tree of good and evil. And he says, don't eat from that because you'll die. It was a really clear instruction. For me, that's really black and white. There's no gray area. There's no small print. There's no kind of details. There's no terms and conditions. It is really clear. But he put the tree there because 
God is a loving God. And so God gives us choice. And unfortunately, man took that choice. And man, when I say man here, men and women, humans, society, a man chose to eat of good and evil. And he knew what he was doing when he did that. It was really clearly laid out for him from God. So man, unfortunately, had a perfect place, had a good world, had a wholesome world, and chose to invite evil into it. And you might say, well, that's really, you know, it's a shame um, that therefore death comes from that. And in Romans 5 verse 12, it said, sin came into the world through one man. Death, death came through sin, and so death spreads because we are all sinners. And so sometimes our, our mindset might be, well, it's a real shame that I'm being blamed, that, you know, we're suffering and evil exists because of one man who invited it in. But the argument there is that, unfortunately, we are all sinners. You know, Adam and Eve had everything going for them. They had such closeness to God. They had a perfect world, and yet they still chose to invite evil into that. So therefore, the, the thought of that is that therefore anyone would do the same. And actually, and unfortunately, we choose to do the same every day. You know, I'm, I, would, I would, you know, happily acknowledge up here on the stage that unfortunately, I am a sinner. You know, unfortunately, I've, I've lied. Unfortunately, I've probably been a bit jealous from time to time. Unfortunately, I definitely have got angry. You know, there, <laughs> there's a few things that I can tick off those Ten Commandment lists and say, yeah, 100%. And I think if we look in our hearts and we're all honest with ourselves, we know, unfortunately, that we are sinners, that we have done wrong. And it says in the Bible, it says um, in Romans 3 verse 23, that all have, fall sin all have sinned and fallen short. So unfortunately, God has created a perfect world. Man has been in that perfect world, but God is an all-loving God and therefore has invited choice, has given man choice. Man chose to bring evil into the world, and unfortunately, we consistently do every day. Normally, the things that we do wrong, the acts that we do, have further consequences and leads to further damage. And unfortunately, we choose to do that ourselves. And so therefore, why, if God is omniscient, if he's omnipotent, and if he's omnibenevolent, if he's got an unlimited power, and if he's all-knowing, and if he's all-loving, why doesn't he just get rid of everything? Why doesn't he get rid of all the suffering? Why doesn't he just, you know, click his fingers and get rid of everything? And the answer to that is actually, God has. God has. God knew that, unfortunately, there would be this time that we sin, that we would experience evil, that we would experience the suffering, and God, because he loves us so much, he decided, therefore, to send his son to this world. And his son then, this perfect human being, half man, half God, went to the cross. And he took everything that we had done wrong and put it to death once and for all on that cross. It says in the Bible that he conquered sin and death. So that, therefore, when we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord, we are seen as perfect. And we are made new. The old is gone, it says in the Bible. We are a new creation. It says in Romans 6 verse 23, but the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so not only does God get rid of our sins through Jesus Christ, but he also then has given us the gift of eternal life. And in eternity, we spend that in heaven a place where all suffering, there is no suffering. There is no pain. There are no tears. In Revelations, it says, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. And neither there will be, sorry, and neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. So Jesus has made a way for us to be close to God again, to be without sin and also, he has made a place where there is no longer suffering. But, and this is the really key but, we have to choose that. Because God is a loving God, we have to choose that. And so lots of people then would argue, but hang on a second. Sin, our wrongdoing can't be accountable for all the suffering that is in this world. You know, not everything, not all of the suffering that exists is because of man's choices. 
And this is an area, I'm going to be honest with you this morning, that is a really difficult area. There is a lot of suffering that happens out there as consequence of man's actions. A huge amount of suffering happens as a consequence of man's actions. And even things like natural disasters or disease, at the moment there's lots of investigation into actually what's the parallel between us polluting our planet and the rise in natural disasters. What's the correlation between us polluting our planet and the inconsistent weather that we have? You know, beautiful sunshine yesterday, crazy rain again today. Um, and so there is a potential to say that there are some parallels and longer term consequences to our actions. You know, we damage our planet, the planet gets damaged, for example. However, there is also an element that there's, there's suffering out there that we can't potentially account for. And this is difficult, but I will then go into my second point here, that there is something to do with faith and suffering. Okay, whilst we're on this earth, God has made a way for us to live in eternity, a beautiful eternity without suffering. And he's made a way for us then our faith and suffering to, like, our, to stretch our faith through our suffering. God is really upfront about suffering in the Bible, like super upfront about it. He says in John 16, verse 33, he says, you will have suffering in this world. And just like black and white. It also says in John 15, if the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. So there's also suffering, but there's also kind of like, per like hatred against yourself as well that he talks about. And so there is this correlation. But in these times, our faith, it's these times where our faith tends to be really stretched. It tends to be in these times that our faith is sharpened, that there's a depth that we experience. If we look through the Bible and we've got Daniel in the lion's den, he experiences the miraculous with God. We've got Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego in the furnace with an, with an angelic figure. But also we need to understand that sometimes God has sent his Holy Spirit as his comforter, as it's described in the Bible, and as a helper during this time. David read this morning that in Matthew, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even during these trials that God's really open with in the Bible, saying that we will encounter, actually, he is there. He provides the Holy Spirit as his, our friend. He provides the Holy Spirit as a helper. He provides the Holy Spirit as our comforter. And he's always with us. You know, and this for me, this is testimony that I've experienced in my life. Um, recently, I would say I've been through quite a, a difficult, I would say quite a trialing period and don't want to go into circumstance like details about that. But it's a really, um, I was praying a lot, Lord, I want to be taken out of this circumstance, like take this circumstance away. I don't want this. <laughs> I'd rather do life without this, thanks. Um, and I had been praying for that. And as time had passed, it became more enlightening for me that actually maybe the circumstance won't go away maybe that's not going to happen maybe I don't get a, like a you know a free exit card and so I decided Lord I'm going to change my prayer I was like Lord in the scripture it says that we can have the mind of Christ and so in this just give me the mind of Christ in this change my mindset towards this Give me, a, give me a, a mind which is more appreciative of the good that I have in my life. Give me a mindset which is more positive because I was actually quite negative. Johnny can confess I was really negative. Um, <laughs> and so, and I believe God really answered that prayer. Like he's really answered it. Circumstance is still the circumstance. The circumstance hasn't changed. But I know that I walk every day now with the Holy Spirit as my helper with the authority that rose Jesus from the dead walking with me. And therefore, even though sometimes the suffering remains, actually, I'm still walking with the Lord. My mum, when I was talking to her about the situation, she reminded me of Paul and Silas in prison. And she said, sometimes, Beth, in our Christian journey, we're just called to pray in the prison. And we're called to praise in the prison. And you know, there's something of our relationship with God that deepens, that widens. There's this understanding that brought us in. There's a closeness to Jesus that like no other when we're called to praise in the prison. 
And Paul and Silas, when they prayed, when they were being persecuted in prison, they then experienced a miracle and it furthered the kingdom. And all I pray is that, Lord, use any opportunity, like use any opportunity to further your kingdom. And that brings to my third point, that actually sometimes we endure the suffering or sometimes we experience the suffering, not all the time, but also we are on this world for a process of sanctification. And that's one of our long churchy words that we love to use and bring up all the time, which is like that we are being created more and more like Jesus. It says in um, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory. Which means that whilst we, as Christians, walk through this really short temporal life, being prepared for a huge time forever with Jesus in perfect glory, we are being transformed and changed to be a bit and a bit and a bit more like Jesus. And so in Romans 5, verse 3 to 5, it says, Not only so, but we glorify in our sufferings. For suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And Don Bird, when he was with us, spoke a little bit about this. He spoke about some of the followers of Jesus actually said they considered it pure joy, pure joy when they suffered. And this for me is like mind boggling. It was great that we had been called. I'd been um, called to be a leader and I'd been created to be a leader. And then I had Don Bird speak up here being like, as a leader, you're probably going to suffer and consider it poor joy, pure joy. And I thought, I think I'll just go now. <laughs> I think I'll leave, thanks. <laughs> I was in it for some coffee. Um, <laughs> jokes, jokes. Um, you quote me on that. No, um, but... This is the call, and this is almost like what our forefathers and the, and the saints as well, we can uphold them because they live this inspirational life where even in their suffering, they are joyful because they acknowledge that Jesus also suffered and therefore they are becoming more like him. Job is um, a great figure to look at in terms of this in the Bible. Job is an Old Testament character who is rich, very rich, very wealthy, he's got loads of stuff, and he honours God. However, God allows him to lose everything. He loses his servants, he loses his animals, and he loses his family. He becomes covered in sores, and even his friends come and goad him and say, oh, so this is because of your sin that you have become like this. And just a point where Job confronts God, and he does wrestle and grapple with God. And God says, you know, just, just trust Job. And the message I think that I pulled out of Job is that Job learns through his suffering what he cannot live without. And he actually realizes that on this temporal short little earth, he can live without his riches. He can live without the material. He can live without his friends. And this is a really hard one, church, but also he can exist without his family. But he cannot live without God. Like his eternity is dependent on God. And this is a really hard thing for us to swallow, but Paul says it as well. Paul says to live is for Christ and to die is to gain. And actually, the one huge factor that is really important for us, the one massive rock that we have to stand on, the foundation that we have to build our lives on, the huge significant element of our lives is God. Because without him, without Jesus, we have no way of everything that we have done wrong, the suffering that we might have been afflicted. We have no way for that to be cleansed. We have no way of that to go. We have no access to heaven for eternity. And there was an old lady who I grew up with in the church. She, I say an old lady. She was a beautiful lady. Sorry, that should be my first description. Uh, she was always old. 
though. Like, the end. Um, her name was Vi Parsons, and I don't think she'll mind me quoting her at all. For me, she was like one of those spiritual heroines of my church that I looked up to. And she said to me, and I know that I've said this before up here on the stage, but she said, you know what, sometimes Beth life's on the mountains, and sometimes life's in the valleys, and life goes like this. But as I've walked with Jesus, my life's just like this. And it's just Jesus. You know, and this process of sanctification is, is that actually some, we've got to know that as Christians, it doesn't matter whether we're on the, on the mountaintops. It doesn't matter whether we're on the valleys. The thing that's really, really vital is that we're with Jesus. Because that is the thing that is going to be the same today, <laughs> tomorrow, and in for the rest of eternity. That doesn't make suffering insignificant. It doesn't. This life is hard. This life brings trials. This life is difficult. And God's honest about that. But he has given us a choice to then be with him forever. And he gives us the Holy Spirit as a helper to help us through this world. I'm just coming to finish. I've seen the time and I don't want to go massively over. But the last thing I want to say is whenever somebody, Christian, non-Christian, not yet Christian, has talked to me about this. Whenever they've said, yeah, but Beth, do you know what? And they've brought this. And they might have said, why is there suffering? They might have said, why do bad things happen to good people? They might have asked, why is there evil? They might have said, I don't know. It, do, it doesn't matter how they phrased it. What they really mean is, yeah, but do you know what? This happened to me. But this happened to me. And actually, where that question coming from is deep confusion or deep hurt or deep anger or a mixture of all of those emotions, a mixture of all of that. Peter, if I can invite the band up, if that's okay. And I think in this period of breakthrough, I think God does want us as a church to do a bit of grappling, to do a bit of wrestling and this morning, if you know, actually, do you know what? Why did this have to happen? Or why is this happening to me? Or I'm just really sad about, or I'm really angry about, then I really would encourage you to grapple with God. The scriptures are full of Job, of David, grappling with God. But the outcome is that their relationship deepens with him. He is an all-loving father who sent his son to die on a cross so that we can have life and be with him. He is desperate to be with you. And I think as we sing our third song, if, third song, I don't know where that came from. I don't know how many we've sung this morning. It's not like I've been counting. As we've been singing our last song, um, there will be the prayer team up on the sides. And if you actually think, I want someone just to pray with me over this, please get prayer with them. I'm not saying... So God won't, don't necessarily take that suffering, that hurt, that pain away. But I promise you that he will remind you that he is with you and he is not forsaking you. So I just really urge you to do that. I'd also really encourage you to investigate this yourself. Like I've given you a bit of a pricey of this this morning, a really short 20-minute summary. But look into this yourself. You're sat there thinking, I'm still confused. I've still got loads of questions. Please investigate. Yeah? And ask the Holy Spirit to meet you in that investigation because it brings slightly more clarity. And again, it leads to a stronger relationship between you and the Father. Thank you. Thanks.